I'm sure that everyone will agree that the budget is more than just numbers, right? The budget should reflect the company vision, strategy, and most importantly, priorities. For any department, any organization, especially marketing, which is high expense cost center, right? Now, when I was asked to uh, talk about how to budget, et cetera, um, I've decided not to be to give the usual talk about you know targets and KPIs and metrics and because that's not budget that's strategy that's tactics. I would like to give some what I believe are practical concept uh, based on my experience uh, doing marketing in the last uh, 12 years, and which for me always work. Um, and I will also use some uh, templates. So my history. Uh, I've been working, uh, I worked for Amdocs for about eight years, different marketing roles. Um, my last role was the uh, head of marketing for the biggest uh, uh, BU, business unit in Amdocs. Um, about a year ago, uh, I decided to do a change. I left Amdocs and I went to a completely different kind of a company, startup, young startup, three years, and also a different uh, um, uh, industry, which is cybersecurity. And it's interesting, kind of, you know, to understand the differences between the two, Amdocs, which is a market leader, big enterprises, uh, customers, my biggest competition in Amdocs was the inside competition, not the external. Uh -huh. And actually, I have here a few colleagues from Amdocs that I'm sure that they will agree. My biggest uh, uh, competition, my biggest uh, uh, effort was to win the attention of the salesperson over my colleagues. And that's also led a lot of you know, the way that we budget and we plan our uh, marketing activities. It was a very sales enablement, product marketing driven kind of uh, a type of marketing. While in Deep Instinct, promising startup, a very highly competitive market. And here we are mostly focused on awareness, demand and lead generation. But the same principles are uh, uh, that I'm using in Amdocs, I'm also using in Deep Instinct. Now, in Amdocs, I used to build a plan every uh, end of year towards the following year. In Deep Instinct, in the last year, I already built three different budgets in one year, okay? Uh, but the same principles I feel that are working for me in both cases. So let me just uh, start to explain one by one what I mean by them. Meet me in the middle. I always look Top down and also bottom up. Top down means what is the strategy of the company, or in many cases, what the CEO wants, um, what success is going to look like, and what are the budget, budget guidelines. You always, almost always, have guidelines from finance. This is how much money we want to uh, spend on marketing next year. Here are the guidelines. This is the framework that you need to work in. What, of course, are the high level goals? Very outcome driven results, right? Metrics, KPIs driven. Bottom up is, let's actually look what actually worked last year. What gave us the best ROI? What didn't? What we don't want to uh, uh, do again? What are the main stakeholders view? What the board wants? The board wants to do this event. Why? Because they feel it's good for us. Product want to launch a, pro a product uh, next year and we need to support it. Uh, uh, sales, they want to do this kind of round table because they feel this, this is right for us. And you need to take all that into account. This is a very input-driven uh, kind of thought, right? What are the activities that I want to do? What other, what more activities, what events I want to do? Not necessarily always driven by outcomes, by results, just because it feels that this is the right place for us. And you only need, always need to balance between the two. When we are doing an ROI, and I mentioned that, this is usually the template that I'm using. Um, Dana here with me, uh, she's responsible for demand and lead generation. And th the way that I um, measure the ROI for the different activities that we do, especially lead gen, is the following. We'll, we'll, how much money we're going to spend? How many contacts we got? I, I know there is a lot of, many definition about what is a lead, MQL, a contact someone that just left you know, his details. And uh, how many relevant leads we got out of it? This is for me a very important metric. How many relevant leads we were getting from this webinar, from this event, and how many of those were junk? Then we can also start track how many MQL, SAL, total opportunities that we got in the pipeline, and what is the ROI, which is the total opportunities divided by the spend. This is a very useful template that we're using, and you can see the different channels that we have here. 
very, very simple but very effective. Moving the needle. I used to have a, a manager in Amdoc that every end of year, beginning of next year, he was asking me, Jonathan, what will be your Neil Armstrong moment? And what he meant by that, he said, Neil Armstrong only had one thing in his resume. The first, mean, the first man to walk the moon. What will be your moment this year that you will be remembered for? And I think that even my colleagues in Amdocs can say that the one thing that I did in Amdocs that I will always be remembered for is that this Amdocs Mobile Financial Services Cafe demo in MWC. Everyone is still talking to me about that demo because that was a really something that moved the needle in Amdocs for my business unit and I will always be remembered for that. So what are the four to five main things only that you're going to do next year that are go really going to make a difference. There are many, many activities you're going to do because you need to do that, because you need to do, because everyone else is doing that. But once in the end of the year, you're going to stand in front of your board, CEO, management, this is what I did. And this has really changed something. It could be pipeline, it could be them, whatever. What are the four, things, four to five things that you believe will really move that needle. And usually how I present that, I have my budget anchored. I present that to my CEO and said, these are the things that we're going to do. I, no more than few bullets for each what I call budget, budget anchors, and this will be my high spend items for the year. Before I even get to numbers, I'm going to tell them, this is our, the big event that we're going to do. This is how much money we want to spend on those. These are the awareness thing stuff that we want to do. And the, by the end of the year, I want to see that at least most of it was accomplished. Be where your customers are. This is a very important point. And of course, it's very industry related, buyer persona related, etc. But the most important thing for me, and I see that very clearly now in Deep Instinct, intent related. There is a difference between learn to purchase. In Deep Instinct, for example, we went to the Gartner Summit last year. Amazing event. All the buyer persona were there. Everyone we wanted to talk with. The problem was they didn't come to purchase. They came to learn. So the opportunities we got from that event were zero. It doesn't mean we don't need to be there because that's an awareness, maybe even dimension stuff. But they didn't come to purchase. It means that when you go to places where they want to learn, don't expect to get leads out of it color it or measure it for the awareness and dimension that you want to do, right? And, and of course, there are differences between the two companies that I wor uh, worked for. Amdocs, the most important thing, one event, and that's it, MWC. Why? Because the business of Amdocs is cross-sell and upsell for existing customers. This is where you, all the sales guys are getting their customers to meet you. And this is your chance to cross-sell and upsell your product to them. Sales kickoff. Maybe even more important, the internal sales uh, event of Amdocs, because this is where you're going to shine in front of them. You're going to tell them, this is what I'm going to bring you next year, and this is what you're going to sell your customer. This is where you actually get their interest and their uh, um, support for your business uh, uh, that you're uh, responsible for. Existing customer workshops, etc. No digital legion in Amdocs whatsoever. We don't do that there. We don't need to do. We have 30, 40 customers that we, that we, well, that I used to be there, that we are selling to. In Deep Instinct, at the life cycle of the company right now, three, four years old, we just started to sell officially last year. For us, the most important events are what we call partner-led events, the reseller, distributors, etc. The intimate roundtables. We get to we bring one, ten people to uh, to uh, meet us, a roundtable. We get three to four. Uh, POCs. I went to a big event, the biggest event in uh, security called RSA. Huge, ex huge expense. Um, amount of money, we got two opportunities. That's it. Because we went lost in the crowd. We went lost in the noise. So we're not going to do that anymore, at least for now. Maybe we'll, we've, when we'll be more mature and we'll have much more money to invest. For now, this is what we're going to do. We're going to focus on this type of event. So you want to spend your money where you're going to get your customer either to learn and probably most and more important depends on your life cycle where they're actually going to purchase they're actually coming to do a purchase we just recently started to work with a platform 
that is called IT Central. Any, any now, anyone know IT Central? Perfect. This, this place is, is a platform that people come to compare solutions. So they are coming with intent to purchase. So we have decided to use that platform. We're not getting a lot of leads, but every lead counts. Plan for the best, but expect the worst. What I mean by that, I always plan above my approved budget. My finance tell me you have $1 million, I will always plan for 1.3. Why? Because things change. But you still want to have that in your plan. You still want to plan that. So if something will go wrong, or if something you're not going to do, you will have a backup plan. And usually, your estimation at the beginning of the year will be lower than your actual expense uh, later this year. And once you get things go, uh, going, your CEO is getting excited, the CFO see the, the value, they will prove you more money. At least for my experience, maybe for others it's wrong, it's, it's different. But when you get them excited, they see the value, you know what, Jonathan, yeah, you can have more money now to do more stuff. So I always plan above my approved budget, always. Second, I always, the, 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 the method for me, I want to experiment before I put investment, okay? We're, go, we're going to do lead, uh, LinkedIn paid campaign. Let's start small. Let's put $1,000. Let's see what it does for us. Let's see if we're getting any results. Then we can fail. We usually fail. We learn. Then we change and then we scale. <coughs> I, always, I, I never, I'm, I'm trying not to commit huge budget before I do something, especially for, if it's for the first time. I always plan in details two quarters ahead. I try not to allocate money to something that will happen three quarters or maybe in the end of the year, especially for a company like Deep Instinct. I told you guys, I had to change my budget plan three times in the last year. So I don't want to allocate stuff for something that will happen maybe in the end of the year if I don't have to. That's also helping me to maintain the agility and to change priorities and budget as I go. The A team. This is, for me, probably the most important thing that I learned in Deep Instinct. You have to have the right people according to your targets and your plan. For example, Legion. Legion, for me, what I learned, can only work, really work, if you have an SDR reporting to you directly. We didn't have that in a Deep Instinct, and we had a lot of challenges to convert leads to opportunities into pipeline. If you're going to do Legion, you have to insist to have an SDR reporting to you that will work according to your agenda, your priorities, and, and to, according to your needs. If he's working for sales, and sometimes he works for sales, it's not going to work. He will expect different type of leads. He will expect the lead to be qualified. They expect to get the POC ready. Someone went to the white paper. Why is he not ready to, 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 start, to start a POC? Of course he's not. You need to work on him, sorry. Sales development rep, the guy that pick up the phone, call the lead, let's have a meeting, okay? Very hard work, very, very hard work, especially in an industry like cybersecurity where most of the buyer persona are actually immune to lead generation activities, immune. These guys get hundreds of calls every week and they don't answer it anymore. This is a critical function in order to be successful with lead gen. Awareness. If you want to go awareness, you have to have a, a strong Markham person to help you build the stories and understand how it's going to be reflected in different channels. Sales enablement activities, you have to have a product marketing, a strong product marketing that can create a sales kit, the collateral, the demos, etc. Events, super important marketing operation and SDR. Because all the leads that you're getting from the events, if you want to schedule the meetings afterward in order to convert them to opportunities, you have to have someone that will do the follow-up. And of course, global versus local presence. My team, I have someone in Singapore, which is responsible for the APAC marketing. And we're going to have someone in US for the uh, North America market. Very important. I sit here in Tel Aviv. I need someone local. There is no way that I can manage all the local activities, local campaigns and programs from here. I don't know. I am not in the time zone. I don't not, uh, I'm, don't, I'm not aware of all the... Uh, uh, local uh, um, uh, 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 stuff that they do. You have to have someone, at least in my experience, someone local that can really run the activities, the local activities, the more tactical activities, like events and, and campaigns, etc. from there. And there are stuff that goes without saying, right? The stuff that you must have, and I think that's what Perry meant by fixed cost, 
So you have to have money for the website maintenance, marketing automation like HubSpot, the giveaways, the design. These are the stuff that are the fixed costs that you have to take into account when you build your uh, budget. This is the template we are using. So you can see here the different budget categories. That's very related to the budget and course that I showed uh, uh, earlier. The different activities, what will be the estimate cost, cost sorry, and more important maybe, how it's going to look like uh, quarterly. This is very important for finance, so they can plan the, um, uh, the liquidity and the expenses along the year. So this is usually how we build the, pl the, the plan. You can see here we don't have a lot of items. As I mentioned, the big ones, it's for sure when it's uh, early uh, um, uh, the year. And this is how we plan and how we present our budget. And again, the categories here, according to your priorities, what would be your Neil Armstrong moment, etc. And that's how we manage the status. You can actually see that we are, I'm, took it from our Excel. How I actually uh, uh, maintain and manage my budget along the year. What will, was the approved plan early this year? The percentage, how much weight each of the categories we gave. That's reflect priorities, of course. Then different pl plans and different changes along the year. And very important, what was the actual versus spend? So we plan to have uh, thought leadership content that amount of money, but the actual was less. That's very important, by the way, for the planning for next year to understand if there were, uh, the estimation went wrong so you can plan it better and also see how much money you have left for other activities you may want to do. So I always, this is for me probably the most important column here. What I, would what I was planning and what was actually spent on the activity. That's it guys. Questions? That's a very good question. I have the perfect person to answer it, which is Dana. We're actually uh, seeing that today uh, very often. There is a way in, uh, in HubSpot and Salesforce how to get different sources into the same opportunity. It's a technical thing. Um, you need to uh, define a campaign, and then you need to define a source. It's a technical thing that, in the end, you see the different sources that uh, uh, got the lead. For me, the most important thing will be the first time we met the customer. If I met him in an event, and then he went to a webinar, the most important thing was the, when was the first time of engagement with that person. This is when he got to know us, right? So therefore, he will go to the webinar to learn more about us. So the first time we engage with a person, by the way, we see that all the time, right? Someone come to our uh, event because he met the salesperson or before, right? or someone uh, came to a, web a webinar because he heard about us. So for me, it's very important to understand because you always need to look at it you know, in an integrated way, right? Even when a, a salesperson brings his own lead, you will always see him coming to your website, downloading a white paper. Then you can say, okay, it's true that the salesperson brought the lead, but we supported it, right? We give the relevant information for him to learn better about us. And that's very important to understand not always where, how, how we generate the leads, how we actually support the sales cycle as well. So there is a technical thing how you can you know, um, uh, connect the different uh, sources. Uh, for me, the most important thing, the first time that we engage a person, but also how we support a lead that we don't, maybe not necessarily brought in for the first time. So let me tell you a secret, Amdoc doesn't have SDR. And for, for a very uh, good reason, we don't, Amdoc doesn't do legion. They only do cross-sell and upsell of customers. By the way, I'm not sure that's something new. I, I, I hear more and more in the last few years, more uh, marketing people, VP marketing, saying that this is the first thing they come, they ask. Because if not, and you just push leads to the sales team, you're giving your fate, you're trusting your fate in their hands. You're telling them, take the lead that I worked very hard to bring. I spent a lot of money. And now you guys need to start the process. I prefer to be responsible for my own fate and say, he wants a POC. He wants a demo. And I did it. 
my person actually converted that to that point. Not someone that just downloaded a white paper or we met him in an event and now they need to do the whole process. They have different priorities. The VP cell will say, ah, you know what, I don't care about this guy. Call this person that I know personally has scheduled me a meeting. This is usually what happens. I prefer to bring to sell, to uh, uh, give them qualified, relevant opportunity in the pipeline. For us, by the way, when someone is doing a demo, he's, he's already getting a percentage, 10 percentage probability in the pipeline. This is something now that sales must be committed for, right? So that's, I think, a, a much better and healthy approach for marketing. Sales can have their ISR in the inside sales rep, and that's fine. But someone that actually need to call someone that just downloaded a white paper, came to event, come, came to the website, filled the form, I want to manage him. So you will speak with him once a meeting was set, you will take the first meeting? A marketing person, you mean? Usually I do, but not always. A good SDR should be able to do the first meeting to pitch the company, and explain the value proposition, and schedule a demo meeting for the sales engineer. A good SDR should be able to do that. 